Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. In this video, we're going to be looking at ways to define a set. So, in the literature on set theory, you will commonly see three different ways of defining or expressing what the members of a set are, and different authors may use particular ones for specific reasons. One might use a list using curly brackets to express all and only the members of that set. One might use a property with a single bar, or one might use an equivalent statement and the membership sign with a triple bar. In this video, we're going to look at each in turn. So we'll start off with a list. So far in this series, our most common way to define a particular set has been using a list. And this is probably the easiest to conceptualize. To do this, you name the set, and set it equal to all of its members listed in curly brackets. For example, A equals X, Y, and Z, or C equals red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. In these cases, the elements listed represent all and only the elements of a set given at the beginning. So, A equals X, Y, Z means that X, Y, and Z are all members of A, and they are the only members of A. C equals red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple means that red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple are all members of C, and there are no other members of C, if that makes sense. So by listing all the members of a set, you have expressed that these are all members of the set, and these are the only members of the set. Now, we briefly touched on another way to define a set using a particular property. We've mentioned this a couple times, but here we're going to explicitly explain what's going on. The notation for this is to provide a particular variable, a single bar, and then the property possessed by all members of that set. This might look like C equals, where C is the big set, in curly brackets, X bar, X is a primary color. This would define a set whose members are all and only primary colors. So the X there stands in for each of the members of the set. If it's true that X is a primary color, then X is a member of that set. If we've already defined the property P as is a primary color, we could make the same statement by just saying C equals X bar PX. Or in other words, C is the set of all elements with the property P being a primary color. So this is a different way to define a set. We're not listing all the members, we're providing a property. And that property has, as we have learned previously, there's going to be a truth condition around that property. For each object, either that object has that property or it doesn't. If a set is defined in terms of a property, then any object which has that property is a member of that set. Any object which doesn't have that property is not a member of that set. And a similar method, which we've not yet seen, is to use the triple bar of equivalence. We might say that having a particular property is equivalent to being a member of that set, or you have that property if and only if you are a member of that set. For example, for all x, x is a member of c is materially equivalent to x is a p. Would mean that for all elements x, x is a member of set c if and only if x has the property p. Note that the last two definitions can contain multiple conditions for x. They can contain a relation or multiple properties or operations. So we could say for all y, y is a member of d, if and only if y is a g, and y bears the relation h to itself. You can throw in all sorts of logical statements into that or into the statement with the bar of defining it in terms of a property. Any of those are possible ways to do it. And depending on the author, you may see them use different versions of these. They may have specific reasons for using one over another. But for now, we're going to treat them all pretty much as equivalent as just different ways to define what the members of a set are. Up next, X versus X in brackets. Here's how we're going to deal with that issue of kind of telescoping sets. And does a set contain the members of all the sets in it? The answer is no. 
Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and stay tuned every single day this month for a brand new video on set theory. Stay skeptical, everybody.